Hey everyone, welcome to another Liquid Chrome Nails video. Today we are looking at some Glam and Glitz acrylic. Now I'm looking at it for the first time. I didn't use this before I decided to film the video, so you are looking at it fresh with me. So the middle and the ring, or sorry, the index and the middle finger have been prepped. Um, I put an extension on them, a little bit of stiletto extension. The ring and the pinky have not. I'm gonna put straight color on those. So I'm starting with Afterglow. It is the Glam and Glitz Afterglow, and I'm going to do a French fade with this, um, sort of, more like an ombre, with Afterglow and Salt Water. So Afterglow is a cream white, uh, surprisingly easy to work with, really easy to work with. White acrylic is not my favorite thing, and this was super, super easy to work with. If you haven't used it, if you've been on the fence, I, I definitely think you should try it. It's worth it. So I'm going to ombre the two colors. Salt Water is a beautiful glitter blue. Like I said, Afterglow is a cream white, so it's no glitter to it, no shimmer to it. It glows in the dark like crazy. I'm going to insert a picture at the very end of the video so that you can see how much it glows. It's insane. So I've just faded up my white or my afterglow and I'm going to come in with some really wet beads of the salt water to feed it through. If you've watched any of my videos, uh, you would already know Stella here, my wonderful demo client. If not, please meet Stella. She's lovely. So I'm fading up with the salt water just lightly. It's a really wet bead of product. I want to talk a little bit about capping your product. I know some people, whether it's gel, whether it's acrylic, they always encapsulate or they always cap, whatever you want to call it. Um, they always put a clear layer over top of what they're doing. I personally never have. Um, whatever colored acrylic I'm using or whatever gel polishes, gel paints, gel colors that I'm using, I've never ever encapsulated them. Um, I try to a few times I really wasn't happy with how it looked in the end. Um, it always seemed bulky to me. I was never able to remedy that. Uh, so I just don't do it. And like I said, I, I really never have. Uh, these I didn't want to encapsulate. I didn't want to put the clear over top. I wanted to just try it this way, um, buffed with a, with a nice fine buffer and then sealed and just give it a whirl. And it ended up turning out really well. Um, after I did this video, I put a, uh, I did my left hand with only afterglow, just afterglow, no clear. I, I put down a little tiny bit of clear on the nail bed, but no, no, nothing else for building. And I really love it. It turned out really well. So this is heat wave that I'm putting on here. Camera doesn't quite pick up the color, uh, but it's a really sandy nude color. It's really lovely. What I wanted to do with this one is have it more towards the tip instead of it being about half and half. I wanted the afterglow to be most of the nail. So you'll see how I do that in a second. I'm using, again, really wet beads of color. I really did enjoy working with this. Like I said, this was my first time and I, I really liked it. I'm using a Light Elegance number 10 brush I'm using CND liquid. I know that mixing and matching isn't, uh, isn't ideal, but I really wanted to try this, so I went ahead and did. I don't think Stella's gonna have any allergic reactions to anything that I've mixed. So 
So when I put the afterglow on this nail, and after we're done finished filing, I end up topping it off with some mermaid glitter because I thought that would be fun. So I'm barely touching the product after I lay it down. Just feathering it up really light. Pushing it into the cuticle and then feathering it up. I've really flattened out my brush here. That I believe helps. The pressure is even when I push on the product. I'm not necessarily a stickler for a one ball or two ball method. I go back and get just about as much product as I need. So the ring finger and the pinky have a fairly fairly big nail on them to begin with so I'm just putting straight color on them I wanted to see how they were going to finish file and seal so the heat wave for one and the salt water for the other I've sped this up um, I've left the two faded nails at regular snail's pace because I wanted you to see how quickly or slowly that I was working to get that fade. With this, I've sped it up because I'm simply applying the product. Again, I really enjoyed working with Afterglow. Um, I said before, I don't typically like working with white powders. Um, I don't tend to like how slowly they dry. Uh, I really did enjoy this one though. So this is a 100, 180 grit, uh, I believe star nail. I've ordered them from Maritime Beauty um, out of Halifax, New Brunswick. This buffer is from Can West. And then I'm just showing you the one nail simply because I do go through the same process for the rest of them. So I'm wiping them with 99% alcohol uh, to remove the dust, get them ready for sealer. So for the pinky, I'm sealing, the pinky and the ring finger, I'm sealing with the Enio Couture, the shiny gel. If you follow Max Estrada on Facebook at all, I'm sure you've seen him advertise this. It is a really nice tack-free top coat. I've gone through three or four bottles now. I really do enjoy it. So if you get a chance to try that out, you really should. I give it a full 90 second um, LED cure. 
And then I decided to put some gems on the afterglow and salt water, so the index finger. That's a really, really big gem, and I haven't had the chance to use them um, because I didn't want to send a client home with something that dangerous on. It sticks up quite a ways, so I thought I would use it today to be able to see what it looks like. So I'm using a little CND adhesive. And I'm just gonna place that there and hold it until it's dry. Generally, if I'm putting a large gem on a client that's going to actually be walking out the door, I will use the Enail Couture um, has a gummy jelly and it's for putting stones on. So I will lay down a fairly thick layer of that first to be able to hold the gems down. It's right there. So that's your gummy jelly. It's a fairly big pot. It's really stiff, it doesn't move at all. It doesn't even actually settle in the jar. So I use, I'm gonna use a little bit of that just to place my salt, smaller stones around the wings. This was purchased in a, I believe, 10 pack for probably something like a dollar on eBay. They're for picking up the stones. Um, I would love to have a crystal katana. I just haven't seen the purpose just yet because I still have the pencils. Uh, when the pencils are gone, I, I probably will invest in something a little cooler. But for right now, these are doing the trick perfectly. And I just want to address to you, these smaller stones are from eBay. I wasn't going to use my Swarovski stones um, on Stella because that seemed to be a waste. So when I'm doing something like this, or I, I tend to use the more inexpensive stones. Again, I've purchased them off eBay. I haven't paid a lot of money for them, but I do want to address the eBay thing. I don't in any way, shape or form think you should be buying any sort of product off of eBay. That is simply my opinion. That is no one else's. Um, when it comes to my product, I, I purchase from distributors. But when it comes to this nice, cool stuff that you can demo with or play with or just learn with, I think eBay is a great resource. So I'm using another tack-free top coat here. This is the Ugly Duckling. I love the Ugly Duckling Tech Free Top Coat. I'm going in and around the stones, not over them because it takes the shine out of them. So I'm just kind of tucking that in. Generally, again, if I was doing a bigger stone on a client, I would go in around with the gummy jelly as well as under the stone. And I'm gonna give that a full cure. So this is the artistic glassing gel. It does have a dispersion layer. That's why I'm using it here. I'm going to use that dispersion layer when it comes out of the light to put the mermaid glitter on. So I'm going to give that a full 90 second cure as well. This little light is great for doing demos, for doing nail art. Um, I have the light elegance light, but instead of getting the client to move their hand and put it in, sometimes I just reach around, I have that light sitting behind me and I grab it and it's, it's really convenient to have that light there. So this originally was supposed to be an acrylic brush. It never did make it into the monomer. I puffed it out like that and I've been using it for my glitters ever since. So that's my little glitter brush. 
So I'm just dusting that on the dispersion layer. And then I'm going to come back through with another layer of the glossing gel. Uh, you'll notice it's got pink on top. This is my glitter top coat. So I have a, quote, clean top coat for when I'm using it uh, over a polish gel polish color. And I have this one that I use only over glitter so that I'm not putting glitter back into my clean top coat. Another full cure. So again, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a picture of the afterglow glowing as it does on all five of my own fingers on my left hand. Don't forget to like, comment, share, let me know what you'd like to see in future videos. Have a great day, thanks for watching.